सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली द कर्ट एंड फेल इन दी ओल्ड फैशन वे द स्टेट ऑफ दी आर्ट हॉकर सिडली ट्राइड एंड जेट एक्सप्लोडेड इन द ग्रेट एम्टीनेस ऑफ आउटर मंगोलिया on dor khan desert in 1971 nobody saw the bodies lin piao the revolution era military hero and marshal of the people's republic of china who was on the flight with his wife ye kun and son lin ligu was declared a traitor just hours later the old marshal the people's republic of china alleged had sought to flee the country after trying to assassinate chairman mao zedong even the central intelligence agency its part declassified investigations shows struggled to sift truth from fiction on the hows and whys of the pla's most storied hero there was no evidence that project 571 marshal lin's alleged assassination plot against mao had ever begun no bullet was fired the cia noted no bomb exploded The report said that Lin for all we know might even have been executed at the summer resort where he was vacationing with his family. That story has emerged again from musty history books as Chinese president Xi Jinping begins the most significant purge of the political system since the landmark anti-corruption churning of 2017 when more than 170 ministers and deputy minister level officials were removed. almost 1.34 million officials from so called flies to tigers like zhu yongkang the country's third most powerful politician were purged the purge was key to shi consolidating unchallenged power in china li shangfu china's powerful defense minister hasn't been seen in public since august and western intelligence services are reporting he has been quietly removed from office General Li Yushao, the commander of the PLA rocket force, which controls both the country's conventional and nuclear land-based missile arsenal, has similarly disappeared. Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang was announced to have been removed, but the grounds haven't been made public. The elderly former president of China, Hu Jintao, and globally reputed business people such as Jack Ma and Guo Guangxiang disappeared. while their businesses were dismantled even the actress fan bingbang vanished for almost a year and later reappeared apparently after settling a tax related case sure no one's blown up but the consequences for people have been pretty serious last year journalist frederick lemaitre reported the first signs of the purge gathering momentum with the dismissal of four high ranking police officials both on corruption charges and in the case of three allegations of plotting against shri himself there's no shortage of conjectures on what's going on in china journalist brendan cole has suggested she is acting to prevent a wagner group style praetorian rebellion of the kind we saw in russia others believe the president is taking on an ideological old guard who are concerned about his economic policies and his high risk confrontation with the west over taiwan even simpler explanations of course exist michael rowand a researcher at the federal research division of the united states library of congress suggests the purge is actually about removing potential opponents to shi who might seem to have gathered too much institutional power and could therefore prove rivals in the future This thing power depraves people. She's father, she Jongshun once remarked. For centuries despots have known that the most refined effective form of terror is to be use it arbitrarily so no one knows for certain what actions might be punished and to what extent or when. The story of she's purge 
or at least one way to understand their motivations is tied to his most intimate memories of exile from the gates of heaven. His father had served the Chinese Communist Revolution from its genesis and was admitted to the party's all-powerful Central Committee in 1956. The elder Xi became the vice premier in 1959, directing the state council's lawmaking role and carrying out various core research roles which guided the party. From 1962 though, expert Joseph Torrigian has recorded, things began to go horribly wrong and all over a book. The elder Xi defended a biography of the revolutionary hero and military commander Liu Zhidan. But according to the Chinese intelligence czar Kang Sheng, the book contained veiled anti-communist heresies. Shi Zhongshun was demoted and sent off to serve as deputy manager of a tractor factory in a remote area. Qi Xin, his wife, was sentenced to hard labour on a farm. In early 1967, journalist Evan Osnos has written, the elder Xi was even humiliated in public by the lumpenized Red Guard youth who had seized power during the so-called Cultural Revolution. Among other things, he was accused of having longingly gazed at West Berlin through a pair of binoculars, which of course made him a capitalist running dog, right? For years afterward, Shi Shongshun would recall that he had been held in a military garrison and that he maintained his sanity only by walking in circles, 10,000 laps one way and then 10,000 laps the other. She, the son, was sent off to work in the remote village of Liang Jiaihe, Shaanxi province, from 1969 to 1975. Several accounts agree that she encountered tremendous hardship and deprivation there. Educated at the super elite August I school, which was run from a former imperial palace in Beijing for the children of high-ranking party functionaries, Xi Jinping also had to unlearn his privilege. Discipline at the August the first school had been tough. Torrijian writes that students were sometimes beaten and I quote, forced to eat old rice contaminated by rat feces. From 1966 though, the school's little princes were confronted by red guards who proclaimed, if the father is a reactionary, the son is a bastard. At the age of just 14, according to one account, she was threatened with execution by Red Guards. Though he went on to study after his exile at the prestigious Tsinghua University in Beijing, the scars must have remained. Graduating in 1979, she secured a job in the Central Military Commission as the youngest of three personal secretaries for then Defence Minister Geng Piao. Likely though, the brutal experiences of those years taught him what he needed to do to make sure there were no threats to his future. Following the end of the Mao Zedong era, his father, the older Xi, was rehabilitated and returned to the Politburo in 1982. Journalist Katsuji Nakazawa writes, Nakazawa suggests it's likely that Xi learned his lesson thus, I quote, in a power struggle, if either side fails to make a preemptive attack, it will eventually be pinned in and handcuffed by the other side. Those on the losing side will be wiped from history, while the victor goes down as a great figure. Even Mao, despite his disastrous policies that results in tens of millions of deaths, is widely respected. That's worth thinking about. Far too little is known about Xi's China to support too much speculation on what might lie ahead. Few experts, the authors Stieg Stensley and Marte Kier Galtum remind us, gave Xi much of a chance when he took power in 2012. The knowledgeable journalist and writer Willy Wo Lap Lam predicted Xi's tenure would be scarred by the divisive political scandals that led up to the 18th National Congress of the CPC when he took power. The commentator Nicholas Kristof saw in Xi the kernels of a reforming Democrat. Instead, Xi demonstrated skills few outside the Chinese system had seen in him. 
He ruthlessly removed key rivals, like the former Minister of Commerce Bo Shilai, using the corruption issue like a knife. By 2017, he had secured enough support to rule like an emperor. Limits that restricted a president for serving more than two terms, which were introduced by Deng Xiaoping to prevent a second Mao from arising, were removed. Xi has systematically built his authority by placing trusted loyalists across the system. But he has amassed power to the point where loyalty is no longer a distinguishing trait or a unique qualification. The purge likely serves to send the message that even the highest degree of unquestioning servility will not guarantee survival. Frank Dakota perceptively notes that the Chinese system is based on a deeply internalized terror. I quote, When you see the underlings of a leader enthusiastically applaud, then you should feel fear, because that's precisely what they feel, Decorter writes. There'll be ever more clapping in coming months as this purge unfolds. The course China will take as it navigates economic, demographic and strategic challenges that threaten the party's command remains entirely unclear. I'm Praveen Swami and I'm National Security Editor of The Print. Thank you again for watching Security Code.